各位同学，各位老师，早安！特别要感谢我们的 LET 参加我们今天的研讨会。Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our second day of orientation activities. And I'd like to introduce now a special guest this morning. Her name is、uh, Jian Yazhen, Jiao Shou. Professor Jane Jen from Taipei Jiao Yu Dashe National Taipei University of Education. Jane is a specialist in CLIL content and language learning. No, integrated learning, content and language integrated learning, an approach to bilingual education. Jane is the director of the Center for Research on Bilingual Education. At National Taiwan,、uh, National Taipei University of Education.、Uh, today, Jane will be giving a presentation for us on Taiwanese education system and trends. Thank you for being here, Jane. Thank you. And we look、much. forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nato. Thank you. It's my honor to be here. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone.、Um, I hope that you can hear me. Fine.、Um, I like to say hello. And before we start, I would like you to、um, tell me where you are origin originally from, and where, where, which city are you currently located, located right now in the chat, so that I know that you are actively participating. <laughs> okay, San Diego, Taichung, Craig, New York.、Uh, I, I don't know.、Uh, Minnesota, South Carolina, Boston, Pittsburgh.、Um, okay, Boston, Hualien, New Taipei City, Knoxville, Chicago. I love Chicago pizza. Maine, Kinmen,、uh, Indianapolis, Jacksonville. Hooray! Wow, amazing. Welcome you to Taiwan. <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay.、Um, wow. So many、uh, different your different parts of type、uh, cities: Taichung, Changhua, and Ilan. Well, all over Taiwan. We're in ten cities and counties. A hundred and twenty. A hundred and twenty ETAs. One hundred and twenty new ETAs. New ETAs. Yep.、Okay. And with the returning ETAs, a total of one hundred forty-seven. One hundred forty-seven. In ten cities and counties. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Thank you for your willing to come to Taiwan and for 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 Fulbright、uh, who brought you here and、um, I'm I'm sure that、um, you are you will、um, have fun、uh, in Taiwan and today my topic is Taiwan education system and trend、um, so let's、uh, you know start my PowerPoint slide.、Uh, I will be hosting. I, I will be holding a microphone and、um, using a clicker to navigate my PowerPoint slide here.、Um, okay. Thank you, Dr. Nado. All right. So Taiwan education system and its future、um, development. Actually, it and and trends. So I've updated this slide, but perhaps you need to reload this page again.、Um, but it's okay. We all know. Okay, I'm not sure. Can you go on to the next slide, please? Okay. So today I'm going to talk about you know、um, Taiwan education system, but I'm going to start with U.S. Education, and then I'm going to move on to competency-based、uh, education, English education, and bilingual education. All, all those fancy words. Okay.、Um, yes. Next slide, please. Okay.、Um, so, right here, you can see that、um, I've brought a group of 12 students to the United States to Seminole County Public Schools in Florida back in 2014, and、um, so. You know what I learned about Florida is that、um, kids they need to, to take Florida statewide assessment, and that my students learned that they're. 
they have only one recess and that students provided um, differentiated instruction and they worked so hard and you know and for the kids and um, it's all about common core curriculum standards and we really did learn a lot um, um, from from uh, from from the time that we were there okay so next slide please okay and then the U.S. education in the eyes of a Taiwanese mother. Um, so when I brought my kids, my, my students to um, three different schools in Seminole County, um, I got the chance to bring my my son with me. And he was five years old at the, at the time. And um, I enrolled him in uh, into kindergarten. And, you know, the first week I got a stack of sight words. And um, it's 100 of them. And her, um, I remember her name was Mrs. Gauthier. She told me that here's 100 sight words. My, the students have already um, learned the 90 of them. So you really needed to catch up. And that really caught me by surprise. But also, um, you know, during the three months there, um, my son experienced, you know, had the chance to um, know, know more about Dr. Seuss. There's Dr. Seuss week, there's silly, you know, crazy hair, silly socks. And that um, they really, you, you really stressed on um, 20 minutes of reading every day. That's what I did with my son at the time. And then um, he locked his reading logs um, on a, on a, on a like reading log and calendar and where you have 20 days within a month and you, uh, you could uh, go to Pizza Hut in exchange for a, you know, a slice, uh, and in like a pizza, and so that uh, really fostered, you know. So it's all about fostering a love for reading in children, and that really worked really well. Okay, so so you know, so this is you know how I experienced, uh, you know. American education as a as a mom through my son and. Um, and, and in Taiwan, kindergarten is not, you know, not compulsory, but in the States, it's K to 12, right? But in Taiwan, um, it's, you know, kindergarten is optional. And so, so that's, you know, uh, the diff one of the difference. Next slide, please. Okay. All right. So, um, also in, you know, in back in 2017, because um, my family is in Orlando, my my sisters and my parents lived there. Um, so I had a chance to take one year off for as a, you know, and uh, um, went to University of Central Florida where I got my master's and doctoral degrees um, and uh, was there for one year research scholarship. Uh, and my son, it was enrolled in fourth grade um, in Andover Elementary. And so that one year really, um, you know, Maddie really learned a lot. You know, it was all about project-based learning. There's, there's this, my impression was it, you know, the living museum where he impersonated, uh, you know, Dis Walt Disney. And um, so um, also there's, uh, what surprised me was that that the scientific method was introduced in the first four, uh, in fourth grade. It was not introduced in fourth grade until seventh grade in Taiwan. So that that also caught me by surprise, and also accelerated reader. So um, the program where where Maddie had to read books and then go to school to do the test, and it keeps tracks of how many words he's read uh, throughout the year. And I think that's a really good program program and also um you know we we only stayed for one year i had to come back um and teach so maddie's classmate at the time when they move on to fifth grade um he realized that they you know kids in the u.s didn't graduate they do not graduate in sixth grade they graduate in sixth grade in elementary school and then move on into middle school um so so you would this is one of the educational system differences that in Taiwan, the education is from first grade to sixth grade, and then um, another three years of middle school, and then another three years of high school. Okay. Thank you. And this, yeah, that was the, um, okay. A little bit more about Taiwan uh, education. Um, 
you know about trends in mathematics and science studies uh, in 2019, um, take a look at the uh, fourth grade science and fourth grade, uh, eighth grade science and how, you know, you can't find Taiwan there, but you can find Chinese Taipei. And I don't want to get political here, but you know, yeah, Chinese Taipei is Taiwan. And so for fourth grade, it's um, um, science, Taiwan ranked fifth, and for eighth grade, Taiwan ranked a second. So next slide. About trends in, you know, about mathematics. Okay, so fourth fourth grade mathematics, um, Taiwan did well. Um, uh, got the fourth place among all sixty four countries, um, and six hundred thousand students who participated in this study. And um, for math eighth grade mathematics. Uh, Chinese Taipei, which is Taiwan ranked uh, second. So you see here on the slide, um, East Asian countries top achievers are, to are top achievers among mathematics in the in a by a substantial margin. So um, so that's a little bit of background about how how well um, Taiwanese kids are doing in math and science. But my point is not that they're doing well and. And my question is, are they really doing well? Because um, um, in 2019, uh, Taiwan has rolled out a new curriculum, 12-year curriculum. In the past, we're focused on, on only on nine-year curriculum. And you know, why roll out a 12-year curriculum um, in 2019? Well, the reason why is this. Next slide, please. Um, a lot of people thought that Taiwan uh, did well in math and science was because of the school hours. This is my son in, in fifth grade when he was he came back um, to Taipei and studied. This is our National Taipei University of Education experimental elementary school. That's a long name for an elementary school. Yes. Um, so in Taiwan, um, kids usually stay from six. Start, the class starts from seven thirty to uh, and ends until you know. And at four o'clock, uh, they spent an average of 8.5 hours at school. For high schoolers, it's even worse. They spend um, 9.5 hours at school, and that's not counting, you know, after school, they go to cram schools to cram for, uh, to get ready for uh, the entrance exam. Um, so in the US, I think you know better uh, than I do, but I have it here 6.5 hours I'm, I'm not sure if i'm correct if you uh if you if you think um this is not correct please let me know in the chat okay so 6.5 hours that's what i have and in south korea in china it's um eight or in nine hours respectively so hours of schooling and um so that might be the reason why we're doing good at school okay but next slide Okay, so you'll see that the Taiwan curriculum is a test driven um, curriculum. It's a you know, test driven pedagogical practice. And I asked my son's uh, classmate, you know, you know, my son's friend, um, my, by the way, my son is in seventh grade, now, seventh grade now in middle school, and they have seven tests a day. I mean, seven tests, different subjects in one day just to prepare for like midterm or final. And, and you know, so these three um, are math uh, final for, for, uh, for, from, from one of the middle schools in Taipei. And I, you know, I've, taken pictures of them and um, I can't even fit all the te you know all the test papers onto one slide I just got three so so a lot of you know test writing practice test and you know it's basically test driven and we and we like to kids are kids are not suffering but they they're, they're not happy so we're trying to change that and so that's why um, we rolled out the 12 year curriculum and next slide please so you see here remember i told you that in uh for fifth fourth grade uh math uh, you know for eighth grade 
math and science, um, Taiwan did really well. But let's take a look at students' attitude toward math. And this is, you know, um, you could see in fourth grade, 22% um, liked math very much. 38, and those who liked that math really much uh, scored 624 on the Tim's math test in eighth grade, a, four, a fourth grade. Okay, and 38% um, somewhat like math and 41% do not like it, but still scored uh, 582. For eighth grade math, you could see that only 12% liked it very much. 33% um, somewhat liked it, but you know, 56% do not like math at all. So you could see here, although Taiwanese students are doing well in math, they're, you know, they're, they're, they really don't like math and they really don't like science. And, and so next slide. And so that's why we rolled out the competency um, curriculum that stresses on the 21st century competencies. And you could see that right here, this is the competency iceberg um, analogy that you can really assess, um, see student skills and knowledge, but underneath the ocean, like you, you really can't tell students' attitude, their self-image, if they're motivated to learn or not, their human uh, traits, their, uh, you know, characteristics, uh, whether they're willing to learn, and that's all um, unknown. And that's this part is what we would like to foster in the 12 year curriculum. So competency here refers to particular skills, knowledge and attitudes that one needs to respond to life situations in the new information society. And like what we're doing right now, we're not having a face to face conference orientation, uh, we're doing it all live. And so um, it's so important that kids are able to, you know, uh, become lifelong, lifelong learners and know how to learn, instead of just feeding them the knowledge and having them memorize all that. Okay, next. So um, these two are uh, professors from uh, National Taiwan Normal University, Shida, okay, and they've worked on uh, the 12 year curriculum and that's this is what they said the move from knowledge to competency turned attention to academic knowledge and intense intellectual develop development to students and his or her well rounded learning in real life situations. So the new curriculum in the new curriculum we focus on real life situations well rounded learning. It's not just about knowledge. It's about, you know, competency. Next slide, please. So you see here, um, there's a this, these are the three values, spontaneity, um, interaction, and the common good. And um, uh, this is what we'd like to stress on is that students are able to be spontaneous, to learn, to critically think, to problem solve, to plan, to implement, and to be creative, and um, to have a sound body and mind self-improvement. Uh, that, that's part of the self part. And also then um, we have a focus on communication. And, and I, I know that in the States, um, common core standards, communication is also very important. Um, it's the use of symbols uh, and communicative expression, use technology, information and media literacy and arts and aesthetic competency and um, to communicate. And then, you know, the last part is common good, which is also social participation to be able to um, um, have, you know, for moral practice and civic consciousness and, you know, for the better good of the society, um, to have interpersonal relations and teamwork to be able to do well um, as a team. And I think that's very important, especially for jobs. Um, um, multicultural and international understanding. So this is, these are the three values of the 12 year basic education. And these are the nine aspects of content Competent, nine competencies that we like the students to foster. Next, please. So I've talked about, you know, the difference between the states and Taiwan being a, more of a test driven and now we're 
focusing more on competency. Um, so I'm going to go into the English curriculum in tai Taiwan um, to to give you some some sort of a background of uh, Taiwan's English curriculum. Well, it all started in 1997. Um, you know, especially in Taipei, um, they did a test run in English uh, that starts from third grade. You know, so when I was in junior high school, I started learning English in you know junior high school, like seventh grade in junior high school. We Back in those days, I did not learn English in the elementary schools in Taiwan. So it all started, you know, in 1997, uh, they, a group of people, you know, scholars said that we need to, um, kids need to start learning English young. Uh, but there was a great debate and people, a lot of people are against it, you know, as well. But, you know, they went with it, started in third grade, and then 1998, there was an official start um, in second, uh, there's for third graders, they have two sessions weekly, each session is 40 minutes. And then in 2002, um, Taipei starts learning English from first grade. So that's only in Taipei and some other cities in Taiwan. This is not, you know, this is not throughout Taiwan, you know, so it's pretty different depending on where you are. So, you know, I know that we have, um, a group of Taiwanese teachers today um, joining us um, in the conf in in the uh, the Zoom meeting, um, and I like you to tell us like um, where you are from, and you know, for you, um, you know, um, does 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 your city or you know where you are start learning English from grade one, or is it? like from still from grade three, you would see the difference. Um, so please put down in chat. Um, I like the, you know, Taiwanese teachers to be able to share um, the realities of our English curriculum. Does it start with grade one or does it start with grade three? Let's see, Taiwanese teachers. Okay, Taichung, third grade, Kaohsiung, first grade. Thanks, Jean. We only have two. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna move on, but you will see that there's a difference in, in Taipei, first grade, and um, New Taipei City, first grade, Kaohsiung. Uh, some, for Kaohsiung, some, Taichung is third grade, Kaohsiung is first grade, and yeah, so it's different. Is any, is anyone here from Taitung? Like Jingmen, I like to know more about you know different Jingmen. Jingmen, Kingmen is they start from third grade. Thank you. Okay, so we're not on the same you know you know page or uh, people you know cities. Each city have their different agendas for in um, terms of English curriculum. Taichung second grade, thank you. You see, even in Taichung, there are um, teachers who said they started from second grade. Um, some said they start from third grade. So even within the same city, each school is different. So that's, you know, so you it really is, um, I hope you don't find it confusing, but I know, um, this is something that you should know that it's, you know, that there's a difference uh, in different schools in different cities. So in 12, 2011, um, they've, in, you know, uh, they've increased the curriculum three sessions per week for middle and upper grades. And, and um, back in 2016, um, in different cities, they were considering bilingual education, meaning not just English, English teaching English, um, but, you know, using English to teach other subjects. And that's where um, we've introduced CLIL, content and language integrated learning um, to approach to, to bilingual education. And so for, for you, um, I, I'm not sure if you're already at, you know, at school, assigned to a school, or if you've met any teachers yet, um, I'm not sure if you're going to work with their English classes, or, or 
perhaps it would be PE class taught in English, you know, integrated activities class taught in English, you know, so it would be different. So next slide, please. Okay, so back in the English, you know, education, and I'm right now I'm showing you why we're, we're going from an English class to a bilingual education using English to teach other subjects. This was um, in my early career, um, one of my first batch of students, um, and she was teaching what's wrong with you, I have a cold. And she had all this, all those vocabulary laid out in the sentence pattern, what's wrong with you, with the puppy, what's wrong with you, I have a cold, what's, what's wrong with you, I had a fever, you know, so what's wrong with this? Anyone in the chat? <laughs> um, so you would know that we are not, when you're asked people, there's a different connotation when you ask what's wrong with you. And when somebody is, um, I see um, the question is, can be used in a lot of ways, yes. And um, asking what's wrong with you sounds mean. Yes, definitely. So they're using this, um, sentence structure in a in in a in a context in a wrong context. I mean, so um, instead of asking what's wrong with you, you know, you could simply just ask what's wrong and not what's wrong with you. It it has a like different con in a negative connotation. It's not used in the authentic situation. Yes, thank you. So that was, but this was part. Next slide, please. But this was part of the. Um, this was in the textbook, and that was the sentence pattern they, that they had to cover. And um, so, um, and this was taught like say 10 years already to a lot of students in Taiwan. And next slide, please. And, but luck, you know, luckily they found that there was a mistake in the textbook and that, you know, pulled, pull it, you know, teachers would pull it out from context and teach it separately. And then without the context, it would be wrong to say so, um, ask, you know, so they changed the version, the second version, and the second version would be just what's wrong. Okay, so that's, that's the, the English curriculum. And we're trying to move on beyond that, you know, beyond asking what's wrong, what color is this, what color, what color is this? And obvious answer is gray. You know, they know this in Chinese already. Why, why are you, you know, teaching them, you know, simple questions and they had to learn the English for that. So th we are moving on. Next slide, please. To a 12 year curriculum and 12 year curriculum, English curriculum e is even worse. Do you know why it's worse? You can see here that a lot of cities has begun their English curriculum starting grade one, but for the 12 year national English curriculum, there, there's no, you know, no classes start from grade one. This is the national curriculum. Okay. Only one session starts from, you know, one session of class in grade three and four, two sessions for grade five and six. Okay, so that's not a lot. You know, can you learn a language in 40 minutes for 40 minutes a week? No, you can't, okay? And so for English curriculum and, you know, for, for the elementary school, all they need to know is 300 words, okay? Uh, re receptive vocabulary. Uh, productive, for voc productive vocabulary, it's only 180, okay? So that's not a lot. When, when, you, when they move on to junior high school, the middle school, it's two, 1200 they had to master it. it's it's a big jump from 300 to 1200 okay um for high school it's 4500 okay and the and the way the textbooks are designed is that you know elementary school textbooks are based on the 1200 uh word frequency list you can't go beyond that otherwise it would be too difficult um for junior high school it's 2000 uh frequency word list next so you see here, um, this is Taiwan, and um, right now you are in different parts of Taiwan. And uh, for, in, for, for 
six major cities. It starts from grade one. As, and in, in addition, there's Keelong, Elon, Hualien, Taichung in some schools. Some schools start from grade one. But for, I, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I got this information from, a, from the publisher um, just last night that uh, Miao Li, I don't know if anyone is in Miao Li, Zhanghua, Yunling, Jiayi, Pingdong, Hualien, Taichung, um, in these cities or counties, uh, they all start English curriculum from grade three. Okay, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. okay. Next slide, please. So now with the 12 year curriculum, you really can't learn the English language well. And luckily we have you here with us in Taiwan to help us, to help the kids you know, learn the language. And one of the um, new strategy or a new policy of Taiwan is um, in 2030, um, I know this is in Chinese, but this is a blueprint for developing Taiwan into a bilingual nation by 2030, okay? So in 2030, Taiwan wants to become a bilingual nation speaking Mandarin Chinese and English, okay? Um, so this is you know, to bolster Taiwan's bilingual education system to improve demand-driven English proficiency in among, among the general public, meaning um, right now we are short, in, uh, you know, short of English teachers or subject teachers who are willing to teach in English. Um, they, all ha they all have to have a B2 level um, in you know, Sefer scale. And so, um, it's it's demand driven because everybody needs to get to get a B2 level in order to teach in English um, and, and enhance the na nation's overall competitiveness. Okay, next. So here's the part where I like you to um, pull out your your phone or your laptop, um, go to www.menti.com and um, then, you know, perhaps the code, I think I need to give you the code, sorry. And please tell me uh, what, what is your area of expertise and what subjects do you teach? Because we're gonna talk about bilingual education and for bilingual education, you might not be just teaching English, you might be teaching other subjects or, you know, you might have, you know, other interests that you could develop it into um, a curriculum for the schools. So I would like you to go to Menti and the code here is 51828865. Can you put that in the chat? If you go to www.menti.com, the code is 51828615. Uh, Five one eight two eight six five. Thank you. Okay, you could. You don't need to. Yeah. So, what subjects do you teach? Would be this question would, would be for our local teachers. What area of expertise? Um, I I I noticed that um, you come from a very diverse background. I like to know your ex uh, area of expertise. Um, some put down swimming, um, TESOL, chemistry, biology. Uh, environmental science. Okay. Oh, so we can't, can we, is this what's showing on the, can you allow me to share my screen very shortly? Okay. Can, can you reload? Can you reload? Yeah, can you reload the It's supposed to go go come up. Okay. Or oh, I'll share I'll share mine. Thank you. Okay, you can see here 40 people participated. Okay. Oh, STEM projects, public health, Asian studies, philosophy. Okay, 55 people participated. I would like to see more people um, participate in our mentee. I'm gonna give you a couple more, like one more minute. Okay. 
um, Chinese, history, government, Asian studies, political science, biology, environmental studies, uh, government, grade one to six, robotics, geography, ocean, ocean studies, sociology, history, computer, English writing, um, home economics, language, anthropology, special education, thank you. Okay. All right, you, you all, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna go back to um, my slide here. Um, with your area of expertise and um, next slide, please. Okay, um, because you, you can see, I, I'm, you can see here that for grade one, we complete, we um, students do not have some, in some cities, students do not have English uh, course. And so they are now introducing bilingual education and starting from grade one, um, some schools will have arts, um, PE, music, um, perhaps uh, life, life, life sciences and, and uh, what else? There's one more, um, you know, taught in English. And for, for New Taipei City, they have school, they're running a school-based curriculum. So when you join them, they might invite you to, you know, to their curriculum committee and you might, be working with the school with their school-based curriculum. So for each school, it's different uh, depending on where, where, where you're at. And um, so you could bring in your area of expertise and you know tie in with the. There's 19 issues that is part of the 12-year curriculum, and this is an example from uh, Lu Jiang Elementary School. I've helped them with their um, school-based curriculum, and um, it's. It's pretty complicated because they've they had to tie in you know uh, in tie they had the the uh, to promote reading with picture books but also they had to teach them not just read the tech you know picture books but to do something with it to be more hands on learning by doing type of thing and also at the same time they need to learn the, their alphabets and phonemic awareness and all that. So the school-based curriculum is the, the approach now, right now, and, and, and a lot of schools are working on that. And um, luckily we have you here in Taiwan to help us out, to help us build uh, the uh, school-based curriculum. Next slide, please. Okay, so another, you know, uh, very, in, very important uh, approach to bilingual education is content and language integrated learning. And, which means that both content and language are important. And I'm not, you know, so it's not just the language, but it's also, it's also the content as well. So um, next slide, please. I'm not gonna go into details on that because I only have 20 minutes left and I have a lot of um, examples to show you. And so here's a, a quick why clue because as you can see that traditional English education, there's only five, 80 minutes per week for, for like upper grades in elementary school. <clears throat> so, you know, introducing bilingual education, um, um, you know, helps us, helps learning, uh, you know, helps students to learn to use the language in class instead of, you know, just low repetition and drilling. They're using the language to learn, which is high cognition um, and the immediacy effect, learn now, use now, in, in, instead of learn now, use later. Um, so when are you go going to ask, um, would you like a cup of tea? Um, how is the weather today? You know, these types of things, um, you know, people in, in this environment in Taiwan. So that's why we're introducing CLIL using English to learn science, music, and, and arts, PE, you know. So it's a also relevance, bridging connection to students' lives. Next slide, please. So right here, um, 
As you know, um, I'm the director of uh, Center for Research on Bilingual Education, and um, part of my job is uh, that we, we have do uh, preserve a teacher training and this is we're lucky enough that this year we had uh, 10 student interns um, in Taipei Wenchang Elementary School one of the first uh, elementary schools who started bilingual education in 2000 back in 2016. Um, so uh, Ms. Chen and um, teacher Yi Chang uh, demonstrated how science games are taught in English. And this is sound and vibration and balancing butterflies. Next slide, please. And so um, our student interns are, you know, during their internship, they, they taught lessons in English. And this is like, this is the very first time that Taiwan is trying out to teach science in English. Okay, so seeds, how do seeds disperse, animal dispersal, water dispersal, wind dispersal, and they did <clears throat> experiments, um, uh, conduct experiments in class. Next slide, please. So um, we focus on scientific inquiry. Um, they had different kinds of fruit. They uh, cut it in half and observed the, how many carpels are in different kinds of fruit, how many seeds are in different kinds of fruit. Next slide, please. Um, and they uh, tried out buoyancy and buoyancy. This word is so difficult. Um, and it's not even part of the 300 uh, word list. And so that's why a lot of people are against teaching science in English. I don't know what you think. Um, is it, do you think it's a good idea to teach science in English? That's one of the questions I would like to ask you if you would put it in the chat and answer my question. Thank you. Uh, give me, share with me your opinions on that. Next, it would be, oh, I have yeses. <laughs> I love, I love for you to speak out if we have time. Um, okay. Next, next would be water. So, this would be condensation and, uh, you know, and they learn about the water cycle. Next. Like um, how seeds travel. I have a click, but I don't think I have time for that right now. I'm going to provide my slide to you so that you, you can um, read it and watch it on your own. Yeah, next slide, please. So we're doing what, what we're doing is not only are we do, focusing on fun experiments, but also we're moving from fun experiments to scientific inquiry, teaching kids to predict, observe, and explain. Okay, next slide. Um, this is also another like a, a maker's curriculum from Xing, uh, New Taipei City, Xingling Elementary School. Greg, Conrad, Marie, Huang, and Mingling Lin, um, they were, wonderful. Um, they developed a um, STEM curriculum for their kids. And, and next slide, please. Um, so they had a, they, this is, this is uh, um, um, what Greg and Lynn um, shared with us um, about their co-teaching mode. They have one teach, one support, or team teaching, or parallel teaching. So depending on the, there's different types of co-teaching mode. You might uh, like to work like which one's better, works better for you. Next slide, please. And what I like about their STEM is they have drama, they have a storyline in, in introducing uh, a problem, a task, and then they build, they have, um, they, they explain scientific theory or the theory behind science, the science behind, uh, the theory behind the science. And um, they did, a, uh, they asked students to write a maker's diary um, and, um, putting down the key important vocabulary draw, and draw it down so that they know uh, the meaning to the vocabulary and as well as uh, later on when they build it, build something, um, they were able to go back and check on their maker's diary. So they had a build and then they had reviews um, at the end of each lesson. Next. So this is Sundial, next. Um, they did series and parallel circuit, you know, they had boat with circuit. That's, a, this is, you know, the, the lesson on buoyancy, um, you know, they, they had advanced that and had circuits and have something uh, running. So it's really, kids love it. It's really very creative and hands-on. 
next. So this is another lesson by um, Huai Sheng Guo Xiao, Miss Serena Li. And um, I was able to observe her classes six times throughout uh, last year. Um, and she teaches fifth grade and um, integrative act activities. And I really like love her lessons. And so she your, her her less these are lessons that she developed on her own. Um, there's this one is on Formosan animal warriors, um, teaching kids about for you know animals in, in in Taiwan endangered animals. Next slide, please. And hands-on activities. They were actually uh, they had to you know. Uh, as a team, save those endangered animals, um, hop over the hippo effect and place them in their habitats. And um, on the other side of the other side, you would see a Taiwan map where there's different um, national parks and they had to save the um, endangered animals together. Um, yeah. Um, what I also like about her lesson is that he, she uses authentic, authentic materials um, and to engage learners in reading authentic text next. And so this is, these are all not, you know, you know, so that's, that's not part of the English curriculum. It's beyond that. And it, it's really, it's really enriching the kids' experiences. And this one is on, um, I don't know if you know about what are the what, sky, sky lanterns. Okay. Um, Pinksy, um, the, the one in, in the, is it Disney movies? Uh, Rapunzel, you were, you know. So um, in Pinksy in New Taipei City, they have, they, they, they release sky lanterns as part of the culture Taiwanese local culture and a lot of for foreigners, um, a lot of people, you know, also visit the site. Yeah, you know. and in this lesson, she talked about um, nature versus culture, and the culture is this sky lantern that we release. Nature is because of the the sky lanterns and the trash. Um, well, she actually uh, went to Pingxi with a group of. Uh, friends and they within one hour they within one hour they collected uh, like a hundred kilograms of lantern trash, so she was asking the students whether they should keep the culture or they should fight for the nature you know and they had a debate on that and that's not something that you would see in an English class, e, uh, English as a foreign language class. So she gave each group different roles. Uh, the one group would be Ta uh, Taiwan blue magpie, the birds. One group would be local vendors selling the sky lanterns, and one group would be the river, and it, which which was the Keelong River. Next, please. So they had, you know, they had to debate, you know, and speak in first person point of view about the situation. And this is one of the um, students' comics. Okay. Um, after that project, um, Keelong River. There's tons of. I'm Keelong River. I have. Um, I have stomach ache. My stomach is full of trash from Sky Lantern. I deeply hope human could clean up this kind of trash. So there's also Sky Lantern vendor, um, Minecraft villager. <laughs> I saw dirty river, less bird, burn, maintain. But uh, another, like uh, a, a group of vendors see say that no without selling sky lanterns then i could not earn a living so i need to sell it you know and also yeah so they had a really good debate on this issue and so um you, we would really like to see more lessons on t local taiwanese culture built you know built on local taiwanese culture and and to be able to discuss uh, in English. Um, so this was a wonderful lesson. Next. So these are all other um, clear lessons in Taipei and New Taipei City. This is Lance from Wen Wenchang Elementary School in New Taipei City. We have um, Zhongxing Elementary School and um, some, um, and also, Taipei City uh, Yongchun Elementary School. They were teaching also PE and this on the 
bottom right corner, you see that these are a group of these. No, these are a group of teachers who are work together, working together every week, um, talking about you know bilingual education and, and their curriculum, developing their lesson plans, and there's you know they were so happy. I, I was I, I am their you know uh, I give them advice on their curriculum, so I. Uh, visit the school once a month, and um, they're really happy that um, uh, one of you uh, is going to join them, and they're, you know, getting the uh, the the office ready for you. I don't know who who who's who's assigned to Yongchun Elementary School. I'm not sure if anyone here um, knows that you're going to Yongchun. You'll be meeting me. Oh, Tiffany, <laughs> I'll be seeing you. <laughs> okay, great. So this is a great team. They're very, very friendly and they worked really hard and we're lucky to have you, Tiffany. Okay, next. So bilingual education in CLIL and uh, what we're, you know, I've visited a lot of different schools and, you know, observe a lot of different CLIL classes. The what we're having trouble with is the definition of CLIL. Um, a lot of teachers are being challenged for their classes because the subject teacher will challenge you because they think that you're not teaching science, you're teaching English. The English teacher would challenge you and saying that um, your English is too, um, too difficult for kids to understand. You need to, uh, you need to simplify your language in order for kids to understand. So, so, um, so bilingual education in CLIL is not easy, um, but you know, let me tell you this content, we're focusing on content goals that are aligned to competencies, the 12 year competencies. And this is our focus. If it's a PE class, we like kids to, to be able to uh, play basketball, know how to, you know, throw a frisbee. You know, it's not about the term frisbee or the term, you know, throw or dribble, you know, those are, those are uh, the language, you know, we focus on the language, but we focus on the language to help uh, learn the uh, skills. So content and skills are, you know, we need to balance both, but we're not, we're not going to change that into a, an English lesson and, you know, not having kids to have enough practice, you know, so content and language balance. And then we need to provide support because using multi, uh, multimodality, um, your body language, your <clears throat> visuals, um, videos and all that, you know, to help to support comprehension. And then last, um, it would be assessment, formative assessment and ass assessment as uh, learning. Um, so to engage in assessing your kids by seeing how well they're doing, comprehending, um, and how well they're doing as a team in your group work. So basically, you know, a balance of content and language with support and, um, you know, mo monitor how well they're doing in class, um, not just through worksheets. We, you know, we don't like to, we don't like to give students too much work to write. It's a, all about, you know, whether or not this assessment is um, uh, uh, is suitable for that lesson. Okay, next. All right, so that's it for <laughs> uh, my presentation, my sharing, and I, I'm leaving five minutes for you Q and A. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. And now would be a good time. Okay. Invited in the economic. Okay. 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 I see that. Do children feel less confident explaining scientific concepts in Chinese? Yeah, that's one of the questions that, that I was challenged. The other day, um, um, you know, the, a local radio station, ICRT News anchor, Jane Lee, um, 
uh, phone interviewed me and she said that um, back when she was younger, when, you know, she, when she learned science, she thought that science was very difficult learning in, in Chinese already. And now you're teaching them in, in English and they're, you know, so parents, or she is personally very worried about having to learn science in English. So do, do children feel less confident in explaining scientific con uh, concepts in, in Chinese? I think that um, they, you know, I forgot to mention about class size. In Taiwan, um, the class size, normal class size for elementary school is 29 students. So um, stu teachers, they mostly lecture when they have experiments, um, they would leave like five to 10 minutes to for kids to explain, to, to show their results. But I think um, from my observation, teachers you know, told me, science teachers told me that they, uh, they really need to practice to explain science in, in Chinese. And right now we're asking them to explain science in English. And they're like, okay. Um, so science teachers need to get ready. Um, and science teachers were saying, well, they don't even know how to explain science concepts in Chinese. Now you're asking them to learn in English. So there was a great debate on that. But um, part of our Sent, uh, part of my job is to push for a bilingual education in science and um, a lot of people a lot of you said yes it's a good um, approach um, but yeah so <laughs> if you could share more of your opinion to me with uh, on chat that would be great and then another uh, question would would you recommend some clear time instead of English text based on teaching if there isn't other time for clear learning I would strongly recommend CLIL um, aside from English lessons because uh, we're so limited in, in, you know, I think the English curriculum um, right now for elementary schools is, is limited to 300 words and really, you know, kids won't be able to use that language or the sense patterns uh, to interact with their with their um, peers and you know it's just you know they don't have chances but if you work on something together like the the um, saving endangered animals working as a team you know they would be able to use the language in class in that activity right now so I really do push for a clear approach instead of the tech English textbook um, uh, but I'm not saying English isn't English curriculum the uh, formal one isn't um, isn't important I'm just saying that you know dual approach, okay. Uh, do schools teach young kids about mental health, self-love and stress management? Yes, we do, uh, but not enough. And I really do hope that, you know, uh, with your expertise, you could bring in more on, you know, experiences on that. Are certain subjects seen as more des desirable or effective to teach using CLIL than others? Um, that's a great debate and that's a really good question. Um, they were saying right now that the non-testing subjects, so the testing subjects are math and science. So they're saying that math and science is no, no. Other subjects are non-testing science subjects such as, such as music, arts and PE. Um, they were saying that these are uh, better for teaching CLIL, um, but I, I but you know, people have different opinions. Is it possible that more content teachers participating in bilingual curriculum by applying functional language, um, trans language groups and scaffolding? Um, functional language, yes. Um, I think that, you know, uh, within the clear lesson, if you have students work together as a group, you know, you wouldn't have to, functional language, making requests, asking for help, you know, you, that happens in the classroom when it's in, in a CLIL classroom and it happens very naturally. Um, it's not like you have to design a separate game-based learning for your English class and having them to practice with using rote, rote practice or, you know, information gap. How to encourage teachers to bilingualism in, in, in any subjects. I would start from you first, pull your friends with you, Pull a subject teacher, an English teacher, work with you as a team. If you start, they will. They will start. You know, I have a personal example. You know, I have a, a, a teacher who was sharing with me that um, she was, you know, do try an English teacher trying to teach science, and her her um, colleague, a science teacher, was saying saying that no, I would never teach science in English, and he 
disagrees and you know after a semester of you know watching her teach science and english he was he came back to her and saying now i would like to try a lesson so i would say you know start with yourself try try it out with you know you, now we have a lot of friends um, from the it's the ETAs here with us, and I think it's a very good try time to collaborate together. And I think that's it for today's session. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chins, for her uh, excellent uh, speech. And then we will take a five minutes break and come back.